Hello and welcome to Matrix Live. This week is a bit special. You're left alone with me and no guest. As you could probably guess from the posts on a blog, we have a lot on our plate at the foundation, so I figured it would be nice to give you all an update on what's happening these days. Uh, let's cover what's happening in the foundation and in the wider Matrix ecosystem. For the foundation, it was a pretty intense period. We rolled out the new website, formally announced the new member scheme, and already got to announce a new first member. So welcome again, Beeper. Um, for the website, you can read about it all in a blog post on June 15 called a brand new website. So I'm not going to expand too much about it. The short story is that the previous website had grown too organically and was a bit disorganized, to say the least and had betrothed a little too, so we had both technical and functional motivations to move to something else, so we did. I'm very happy we received so much positive feedback about the new version. Um, a few things still need to be adjusted, so please, if you stumble upon something odd, let me know in the website issue tracker, for which I'm going to leave a link in the description. The website was also created with the new membership scheme in mind. Uh, the front page is meant to gently onboard newcomers, but we also wanted to make options to support us more prominent. So the first item you can see in the support page is a call to action to incentivize you to become a member. This is because the foundation is now able to formally accept both individuals and organizations as members. The main goal is to steer the foundation in the right direction sustainably. So if you want to dig in the whys and hows of the membership, we have a blog post announcing it called Announcing the, Mem the Matrix.org Foundation Membership Program on June 20. This is another initiative that was very welcome. We received plenty of requests for membership from individuals. Uh, I'm going through them progressively, so don't worry if you haven't heard back from us. It's just because so many of you want to be part of the adventure, and that's truly heartwarming. We also received a request from several organizations, and that is really great too. Uh, but now I'm looking at the public sector in the eye. It's now your turn to show up and contribute to the sustainability of the Matrix ecosystem. I'm delighted to say that people joined the Matrix.org Foundation to support Matrix development and sustainability. So thank you, Beeper, and you can read about the why they decided to support us in the blog post Beeper joins the Matrix.org Foundation from June 22. I also got a few questions from individuals following the membership scheme announcement. Uh, the first question was, what about supporters? So membership is complementary to supporters. If you believe in the mission and trust us to take the right decisions, it's perfectly fine to just keep donating to support your work. If you want to get more involved in the governance of the foundation, you can request membership by reaching out to us at funding at matrix.org and we'll get back to you. Uh, this allows you to indirectly run for the governing board uh, because there is one new representative of individuals at the governing board, um, up to four uh, members. So one representative every 50 new member. So in short, I recommend you to apply for membership only if you want to get involved in the governance. Uh, another question I got was, what is the matrix conference you mentioned in the perks? Uh, so this is not the Matrix Community Summit that will happen in September, which is organized among others by the fantastic Jan and Christian. Um, but given the pace at which the ecosystem is growing, we wanted to get an actual official Matrix conference where the community of individuals and vendors can meet. Uh, we believe there is a lot of value in such a conference, not only for projects to advertise themselves, but also for Matrix hackers to find cool projects to work on or to be hired to work on. Um, what else? So account portability and sliding sync. Uh, I've been talking about trying to make the onboarding experience easier on the new website. One of the objectives of Matrix is to promote decentralization and the Matrix or foundation doesn't want to become the Gmail of Matrix. Uh, but at the same time, we need to be mindful of the general public's understanding of concepts like federation and we need to be able to offer a simple onboarding experience for people who are not into tech. How could I pick a home server before I even know what a home server is or what the app even does? So practically speaking, outside of corporate context, people do start their matrix journey on matrix.org. That's just 
what makes sense to them. As of now, it's difficult to leave a home server from another. We have migration tools that exist, but the whole experience is quite clunky and it doesn't really feel native because it's not. This is why the foundation is working on account portability. Um, and the first step for that is pseudonymous identities. I recommend you to watch the last week's Matrix Live with Keegan to learn more about uh, account portability and pseudonymous identities. But before wanting to move to another, to another home server, uh, you need to be convinced that the app is worth it uh, for you in the first place. So one of the biggest gripes people have with Matrix is the slow sync. Sliding sync is a new way to perform sync that is very fast. And Matthew did a demo of sliding sync in practice uh, at FOSDEM in February. We kept improving it in practice, so we released the sliding sync proxy, which allows your home server to support, to support the feature. Uh, I made a matrix tutorial about it, which I'm going to link in the description too. And in parallel, a lot of work has been happening on the matrix Rust SDK to support sliding sync client side. Element has been has has dedicated a lot of resources uh, to work on the SDK, but I really need to warmly thank Kevin Komai, the maintainer of uh, the GNOME Matrix client Fractal, for his numerous and great contributions to the Rust SDK. Merci Kevin. Kevin wants me to tell you that Fractal is not an official uh, Matrix client for GNOME. It's just a client, a Matrix client for GNOME, and that he is not the only maintainer of Fractal, but one of the maintainers of Fractal. Anyway, thank you very much, Kevin. Element should be releasing Element X iOS out of beta very soon, making it the first stable sliding sync enabled client to my knowledge. Stay tuned. In other news, I would really love to get back to recording more Matrix tutorials uh, now that the big milestones are passed for the foundation. I was thinking about how to set up monitoring for your Matrix instance, uh, for example, so let me know in the comments if there are topics of particular interest to you, and I will try to find the time to cover them. In the meantime, take care, and i see you next week!